officially the first episode of Flip the Script. We're here at the Jackson House. We have none other than Paul Rodriguez, who for me has been a incredible inspiration, motivation, um, teacher, teammate, uh, friend, man of God. I mean, the list goes on and on. The lessons I've learned from P-Rod on the road and from being a teammate with him um, have lived with me up until this day. Whether or not I put them into practice when you first showed me <laughs> is, uh, is up for question. But nonetheless, uh, you've had an incredible impact on my life and uh, definitely on skateboarding as a whole. Um, your style, your innovation, uh, the way you go about skateboarding, the way you go about putting your video parts together, um, your competitive mindset, uh, none of it goes unnoticed to fellow skateboarders. And uh, it's an honor to have you here oh, as you, the bro. first guest. And uh, yeah, well, P-Rod. Well, thank you. It's my honor, Ryan. I'm really excited to be here today. Uh, left me speechless right there, man. I appreciate that. It means a lot. You know, we spent a lot of time together over the years, so... Believe you me, I've learned just as much, if not more, being around you as well. So, or what not to do? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. A lot of what to do. We 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 have a little bit of we have a uh, what to dos and what not to do yeah. uh, in in both of our columns. So yeah, that's fair enough. <laughs> What's our age gap? I'm 33. Five, I'm 38. Five okay. Years. Yeah, five years. I remember um, meeting you at Tampa. I think that's where we first met. That's the first time I, I remember like talking to you. I think mm -hmm. Evan Hernandez was there. Yeah, that was the first time we spoke. But I remember the first time I saw you was at a castle contest. Okay. You were eight years old. It was at Simi Valley Skate Lab. Yeah. Okay. I was so I would have been thirteen. Yeah, I wouldn't yeah. even have known. You were you were in the division, just the age group, just younger than me, flying around, just killing it. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I remember at Tampa, dude. It was. I might have been 13, might have been younger. Maybe a little, yeah, 12, 13, right Something in that Something like that. And I remember you guys were skating the bump to bar, and I kind of just weaseled my way into the, into the session, and you, like, talked to me. And then we had, like, a really rad conversation. I think you asked me how old I was, and I told you, and you said, keep going. Yeah. You said, just keep going. And for me, to have someone like you who I looked up to and who I knew at this point, like, knew was P-Rod. Um, give me the time of day and give me any attention change the way that I respond now to anyone that I meet in the streets any kid that I meet um, any kid that wants to talk to me anybody at the skate park um, you had a, a lasting impression on just being cool and giving me the time of day and it was such a I don't know it was such like an eye-opening experience because it takes no time it took nothing from you to just be like hey man keep going like so simple but it changed it changed me and it changed the way i treat people so like i really appreciate you giving me the time of day and then not to mention like we've had years and years like on the same company and traveling the world and competing and um yeah it's just been a it's been a wild experience for sure a lot of memories a lot of a lot of traveling a lot of experiences, man. It's crazy that <clears throat> you brought that up because we've never spoke about that moment no. ever. And we spent a lot of time together. Um, I do remember that day in Tampa. Um, and yeah, I had no idea. You know, I was also a kid too. So I, I had no idea it was going to be impactful or stick with you or last. So you just, you know, felt nice to say, you know, you know, yeah. just like you were killing it. You were so young and you were always around. Since I had ever been around, you were always around. So like, I never knew of skateboarding not with you in it. And uh, I knew that I had seen you at Skate Lab before um, and to watch you. And now we both made it to like Tampa contest. Yep. Like that's a big yep. step in itself going from like Castle for people who don't know, that's like the little league for skateboarding. Yep. So from us making it to little league to basically at Tampa and that's like what, going to the minor leagues for and sure. eventually make it to the major league, you know, best analogy I can think of but it was just cool like seeing you again over there and like yo keep going we we both made it this far yep let's keep it going you know so yeah, yeah it's, it's a it trip cool. you know speaking of California Amateur Skateboarding League Castle that was like one of those it's different now like that's actually a good segue it's like 
we actually had a really dope amateur skateboarding league to like come up in, you know? Like, Castle was the thing. If you were skating in mm -hmm. Castle, like you were, you were focused on getting up through the rankings and yeah. kind of my upbringing was a little bit different than yours. You, you started, you know, you started skating when it was like super prevalent to like be a street skater. Mm -hmm. When I started skating, I didn't know anything, you know, like, so I went for contests. I liked the contest, not until I was, you know, a seven or eight did I see the toy machine video and was like, whoa, street skating's a thing. You know, this is insane. Uh, yeah. But for, for us right now, and like for me, I guess the question is like, what had more of an impact on your life when you started skating? Like, did you want to do contests or was street always a little bit more fulfilling? <clears throat> I wouldn't say street was more fulfilling. Street was just the thing that drew me to skateboarding. You know, the way I, the way I was introduced to skateboarding was just from kids at school. They would be outside of school before class, would start in the parking lot skating, and then they would be there after school. And I could just, I'd find myself, I would walk home to and from the school. Uh, and I would find myself, like, standing there after school, just watching them flip the board and landing on it and just like, it's so cool, like, how the hell can they do that? Like, I don't understand, it's like a magic trick. You know when you see a magician do something, you're like, I have to know, tell me how you do it. It was the yeah. same feeling I had, like, I had to know. So eventually, I was really, really shy as a kid, and uh, eventually um, went up to one of the kids who is still a lifelong friend, my friend Dan Abadi, you know Dan. Yeah, I know so, Dan. Um, he was one of the kids skating, and I just asked him, like, hey, man, can I... Can I try like stepping on your board? That's crazy. That's out. how long you've known Dan. Yeah, that's how that's how Dan, I met Dan. start. Yeah, and he wow. let me he let me uh like stand on his board and push around. And so little by little, I would start talking to him, get to know him, yeah. and, like start hanging with him and his group. And uh, so that's how I started. That's how I got introduced to skating. Just was like I have to know how it was done. So for that Christmas, I asked my parents for you know some money. Anybody like what do yeah. you want for Christmas? Just a couple dollars. I want to go to the skate shop and pick out my own skateboard. And so that I just started trying to mimic what those guys would do and hang out with the kids at school. Crazy. And so that's what introduced me to, to skating. Then I would go to the, the skate shop, Valley Skate and Surf, which was really close to my house. I would hop over my backyard wall, skate across the street, and just go in there and hang out. Little kid, probably looking back on now, pretty annoying. Like the guys being on the counter, like to me, they were like grown men, but they were probably like 17, 18, yeah, like, working there. For sure. And I would just be like, what's the best skateboard? Who's the best skater? Oh, can I see this shoe? Oh, can I see that board? What's that? Can I look at that sticker? And like never buy nothing, but just like <laughs> just window day. shopping. Just, yeah, just, just being there every day, watching videos and going out front, asking them if I could skate the flat bar. Uh, and they would just school me on, you know, what the videos were to watch and who to watch. And, and I would just like soak it all in like a sponge. So to answer your question, that's how I was introduced to skateboarding was street skating. But then when I got, when I found out what Castle was, yeah. I immediately wanted to, to try it. You know, I grew up playing little league baseball. Yeah. So I played like organized sports when I was even younger than that. So that seemed pretty normal to me. And I would try and I remember my first, uh, actually, I don't remember my first, first kind. I just remember that first year of doing it. I was so nervous. I, I, never, I didn't know how to handle the nerves and the, and my knees would be shaking. I'd be like, I don't understand. I can land all this stuff all the time. Yeah. I can't, my legs won't stop shaking. I can't control myself. That's the crazy thing that I think a lot of people don't realize is yeah. like those nerves are, are, unless I'm talking to another skateboarder or another athlete that's been in a situation where like you feel like everything is on the line, like you don't understand. I used to cry. I used to like, and especially in Castle, I would like be so ready to skate and it would get close to my time to go and I'd run off the course, go to my mom, yeah. and I would cry. Not because of anything else except for just too much nerves. Yeah. And then I'd go back out and it would be fine. Yeah. But nerves are crazy, dude. They are. And that, <clears throat> believe it or not, for a contest, that's what I fell in love with. Yeah. The psychology of it. Like, uh -huh. the, like can I overcome myself right now? Yeah. yeah it, it was rarely like, okay, I want to go out there and beat this guy, beat that guy. I want to like not let my fear win. I want to beat my fear and know that I can still against do yourself. this. Yeah. What exactly what I can do in practice, I want to know that I can do it when it counts. And I had to like 
learn and started studying athletes as I got older, you know, it like it, it developed over time, obviously, but like I started like finding a thrill on that challenge of like, okay, can I yeah. do it in the moment? Can I yeah. do it when it counts? Can I do it right here, right now? So I found, I just find them two different challenge, like two different challenges, like contests, you got to do the hardest thing you can do right here, right now, yep. one try, do or die. And in, in, in street skating and filming, it's like, you could take as long as you want and just try something new and innovative that you can't just do yep. in a contest yet. Take days. Yeah, take days, weeks, months, whatever. You might be trying to trick throughout the period of a year or two, like keep going back to it periodically. Um, and I like that challenge too of like having something, a vision in your head that you know you can do and then just going at it until it finally comes from, from out of your head onto a hard drive. Yep. <laughs> and you're yeah. like, okay. Finally, it, it became real. What, um, that's cool that you said you, you looked at other athletes. Like once you start realizing that there's other people that are doing the same mental process and have to be mentally strong, you know, that almost segues perfectly into like you've done some commercials and some collabs with some of the coolest people. One in particular, Kobe Bryant, rest yeah. in peace. Yeah. Um, you know, I think... Actually, do we have the clip? Let's yeah, just let's roll let's it. run that. That was a, that was a very special experience, man. He was he's so normal, dude. He was so yeah. rad. So what's going through your head? When he's there, is it more like locked in? Are you locked in? Uh, right there, yeah. Because at this point in my life, I was really, really like that was in the heat of us our competing yeah. Yeah. era phase, and that was I was really into like the psychological side of things and mental toughness and all that. Yeah. So like, I would study Kobe, like 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 as if it were like a college course. You know yeah. what I mean? I would study Muhammad Ali, study Tiger Woods, I would study. Anybody, Michael Jordan, anybody yeah. who I felt were like the most clutchest athletes there are and try to like watch documentaries or interviews or anything that I can find any information on. What do you do in here to like, to just separate yourself just that little bit, yeah. you know? So to be around him, I was, that's why I got to know. I was watching that right there and on the first clip it shows me I missed that switch flip. I slipped out and I was like, oh, I remember like, Kobe, I got to do it right here, clutch. I don't want to be having him walk up the stairs 20 takes, you know what? I was like, I got to do it. And I did it second try, but I was like, fuck, I, I want to do it first. And I was like, all right, mama mentality. I remember like having yeah. this inner dialogue. Yep. And then, uh, and then I slipped down. I was like, I was so like, oh, okay, okay, right here, right here, next try. And we did it uh, second try. So it was just surreal to have him there. Uh, I had met him a couple times before that, and the fact that he just – agreed to come like yeah to the shoot and like be a part of it like he was just down i don't know he, he always had like a every time i talked to him he would just he would always mention the the time that he tried to skate and he fell and, yeah and uh and i was just i would just be like speechless i was like uh, i don't i didn't know how, well, how to dude, talk to him <laughs> like, do you remember when he showed up to maloof, maloof Monica? yeah oh just right here in Costa yeah, Mesa. There. yeah yeah it was insane we're, yeah we're skating maloof yeah and just I went to watch nowhere, you. Yeah, there, yeah, out of nowhere, there's this like commotion, dude. And I'm like trying to figure out mm -hmm. what's going on. Like sometimes at those contests, there was like a fight or someone trying to jump over the barrier and get mm -hmm. in, and like everyone would rush. And I just remember this energy. The energy completely changed. He was wearing like a white outfit, yep. and like he had his Kobe's on, and he just looked. He looked dope. He just looked dope. Yeah. And he walked in, and he was saying, "What's up to skaters?" And like I didn't know if you remember me. I had seen him at a couple basketball games, you know, I think, I, I don't even know how, but we got to sit courtside and um, I was wearing like a Laker Red Bull hat that I had created and um, he like noticed it, but then he like knew me, he knew of me and said, called my name and I like, I like panicked. I didn't even know what to say. I was just like, like, yeah. Oh. <laughs> like <laughs> my buddy, Tony, you know, Tony, oh, yeah. Tony was like, bro, Kobe just said, what up to you? And you didn't say anything. I'm like, I couldn't say anything, Freeze. you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. I like, couldn't say anything. So I always wanted to redeem that scenario. And then I saw him at Maloof Money Cup and he said, what's up, Ryan? And, um, I got a photo with him that day and 
uh, it, it's different, dude. Kind of like what you're saying, like going into Mamba mentality. Like, it's weird how a person can have that type of impact on you. You mm-hmm. know, like he had that impact on on athletes, just yeah. athletes in general. You don't have to play basketball. Like, you just be an athlete and you can work recognizes work and like you can see what he True. put into it and yeah um wanting to skate good in front of kobe was like there's not many people i like want to skate good in yeah front that of. was more at least for me uh, to me i was like more pressure like yeah. the contest is already you know gives yeah. you nerves enough now you're like it's kobe fuck the contest i just yeah. want, i don't yeah. want, i don't want to look silly in front of kobe man <laughs> like yeah. yeah was that your first interaction with him no, that was right after we shot this commercial. Because I remember that year yeah. we premiered the commercial on the commercial breaks of Maloof. So this was like maybe a couple of weeks, two, three weeks after or before that contest. Yeah. Yeah. What yeah. number pro model shoe are you on right now? Uh, well, I reached 10 with Nike. And then we did uh, the What's the P-Rod Dunk. Thank you, brother. Huge. Congrats. Huge. I don't think people you, realize buddy. that skaters wear <laughs> Nikes when they skate because of P-Rod. No, if you're a skateboarder and you're wearing Nikes, it is because P-Rod has paved the way for you <laughs> to be in those kicks. Oh, and he you, made brother. them cool. Without a doubt. <laughs> he made them cool. I thank remember, you. dude, I remember when you got on Nike and it was like, a, it was like earth shattering it was crazy because we were all like you know the etnies and Mm -hmm. dcs and like action and circa like those were kind of what you expected skateboarders to be in and then you know nike was like kobe Mm -hmm. and then it made sense that p-rod the kobe of skateboarding is like going to nike and uh i just always thought that was such a such a power move and just so dope dude and um Definitely helped break skateboarding into the mainstream with people taking you guys seriously as athletes. I think that's one of the biggest things that people looked at was like, mm-hmm. are, are skaters real athletes or are they just like streets, like graffiti artists? Like, you know, what's the vibe? Because people always had the misinterpretation of like what a skater was. For yeah. sure. So for sure, you know, you have Ice Cube in a car and you're in a commercial with him. I'm like, my mind was blown. Yeah, how was that? How was that day with Ice Cube? That was, that was cool. That was the day either before or after Kobe. So, oh, like, so you just had a whirlwind. That same commercial. That whole commercial. <laughs> that's a big week. I was just like, what the hell is going on here? I was like, these dudes are in my commercial you yeah know? and uh i remember we were in a we were in east la in a neighborhood where we shot the scene where he's in the in the low rider and i remember sitting there i remember him getting up on set i'm just like i felt the energy i was like i think my likes my life is taking a shift right now like yeah. I, I feel like it's, it's my, my dream is like going up a notch from where I, I didn't even know it could go, you know, yeah. and it just uh, that that whole commercial felt special for me, and I thank God. Like looking back on it, everything that had to go right went right, and it, the whole commercial went. Because when they asked me, "What do you want to do, like skate wise, for this commercial?" Yeah, and I was like, I told them switch trade, Santa Monica triple set. I never even been there. Yeah. Never even looked at it. Yeah. I just heard rumors that Guy Mariano had did it years ago, but nobody filmed it, and somebody took a photo. Um, and I was, I remember. Did he? I don't think so, actually. Yeah. I, I actually should ask him when I see you him. You should definitely ask him. <laughs> but uh, I don't, I'm I don't curious. think it actually did. It was like, a, it was like, a, um, it was just like an urban legend yeah. that he had done it, and only a photographer was there, and he never went back. And I was like, well, shit, if. The footage is never going to come out. Right. Like, oh, let me give it a shot. Right. And he wouldn't care if it was you that did it anyway. I hadn't even, I don't even think back then I had met him yet. He was still oh, like, really? he was still off the scene for a while okay. before he made his yeah, comeback. Yeah. And so like, I just threw it out there. Like they told me the concept, what they want to do, the Ice Cube song, but for a skater's version, and we want to get cameos. And, you know, Costin had just got on Nike as well. My, my skate hero that I grew up like, being my, he was my number one. So like, Ice Cube, Kobe, cause it was so epic. And then like, so we need, to, you know, what tricks do you want to do? And I'm, the only thing I think of it had to be uh, Santa Monica triple set. And I remember getting there that day to, to the triple set. They permitted it, everything. Yeah. This whole big production it's a camera longer crews, than everything. You and I get there and I was like, <laughs> what did I just get myself into? Like, oh my gosh, like yeah. I was I was in panic mode, and. Uh, 
the, the weeks leading up to it, I had a couple weeks. I would be at my skate park, my old skate park. Yep, I remember that. And part. I had the little double set that you can extend longer and longer. Mm-hmm. And I just would extend it as far as it can go and drop in on the quarter pipe, go as fast as I possibly can. And every day I would just switch trade as stairs as fast though. as I could. It's different preparation. <laughs> I would just do it every day over and over and over. If like for those couple weeks, I wouldn't even skate, like have any other part of my skate session. Yep. I would just spend an hour or two every day just switch tray over and 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 over. And uh, when we got there and I was like, this is still way bigger than what I was practicing right. on. I was like, yeah, that's, that's terrified. No joke. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was scared, and uh, but I couldn't, I couldn't like chicken out. I had to. So, thank God, you know, I was able to like pull it together, get that trick. And once I got that trick, it was really just like, well. Thank you, my brother. Yeah. Once Same I got way. that, mm-hmm. the, the, just the, just the weight of the moment just melted off, and I was like, okay, okay, everything else is just like fun from here on out but that was really stressful for sure that was a moment where i had to like go deep mentally you've been in those moments been many times so i've been there so uh you, you know what I'm, I'm talking about but i just can't believe that it, it worked out yeah because i've also had moments where like it was kind of the same situation and it didn't work out and i tried my ass off and didn't get the trick yeah and, like feeling embarrassed or like, oh they spent this money it's production i couldn't get it like oh what am i gonna do like skateboarding though dude it is it's skateboarding it is. and i think that makes you know that humanizes skateboarding when those days don't happen because it's like i think a lot of people sometimes think that like you know the way you make skateboarding look sometimes the way i make it look it's like oh i can do that you know and then you know these big companies don't understand that it's not that easy it's right. not easy at all actually it's like you could catch me on a good day where it's like yeah it's gonna happen or you yeah. could catch me on a bad day and like I don't know what, Ryan, you're going to get that day mm-hmm. of filming, you know? Like, there's a lot of variables that go into that. But, you know, we were talking about it before this, and you kind of segued into it, and, you know, you said, thank God. And, you know, I was talking to you, and I was just saying, like, my life finally got better, which it's been a lot better, a lot more manageable once I got out of my own way, which I got out of my own will. And I said, all right, Lord, like, take it. I trust you show me your will for my life and you've always been that dude to me you know and i'm not saying you don't have your struggles for sure i know i know you do have struggles i know we all do um but you've always been you've always been vocal about god dude and it's always been something that rang in my head and i was like man you know p-rod dude P-Rod believes in Jesus, like, and I believed in Jesus. I just didn't understand what the Bible meant or what it said or, yeah, yeah, or what yeah. was going on. And um, I just wanted to share with you that I appreciate your openness about Christ throughout my whole life, dude, I throughout my whole that. life, <laughs> you know? And, like, you've paved the way for me to be able to acknowledge Christ, talk about Christ openly, and... Um, not be ashamed in, in the slightest, but mm-hmm. also see the effects of like what happens when you start following the creator's path. Mm-hmm. So um, I've, I've always wanted to thank you for that. And we don't have to go too I'm deep grateful. into it. But I, mean, I, uh, I can go as deep as you want to go into that. You know, I don't, I, I've never, I don't care. Yeah. It's a great conversation. I know? think it is a great conversation, you know, and I think it's, um, I don't even think it's scary, man. It's just, uh, it's sometimes I think for people it's the fear of the unknown which maybe it could have been for me as well just not really understanding like how he could forgive some of my actions that I had done Um, but once you get a little bit deeper and you actually realize that like him dying on the cross for my sins is exactly what it sounds like for all of my sins as long as I try to be a better person and realize that my wrongs are wrong and try not to repeat those wrongs um all of a sudden these doors open up that uh, I could have never even planned for or even thought about. Um, case in point is like this podcast, you know, and Bear was asking me who I wanted on it. And immediately I said, P-Rod, I want P-Rod as the first one. It's the catalyst. You've done a lot in your skateboarding career, but you've done a lot for so many people, man. Thinking about the tricks that you were talking about, you know, switch tray down Santa Monica, like there's tricks that, I think about and I think about P-Rod. Switch flip, switch heel, switch front heel, switch tray. <laughs> Actually, I still think you don't have a stance. 
You know, <laughs> you're like one of the first dudes that like actually don't really have a stance. That's 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 what I was hoping to get to. I was <laughs> so trying hard, to get dude. there. That was like my my vision. Even before I skated, I had this. I don't know if it's OCD or or what, but I had this thing where I, I wanted to be even, yeah. as even as possible. I'll be a little kid playing tetherball at at school, the tetherball court, and I would play left or I would play right, and I, I'm naturally a lefty. And I started playing guitar, and I picked up a guitar naturally, started playing right-handed. But then my favorite guitar player was Jimi Hendrix, and he played left-handed. And I was like, but I'm left-handed. And Jimi Hendrix left. What the? I got to play like, like my hero. Yeah. So I like would take guitar lesson right hand. I told my guitar teacher I wanted to play left hand. I wanted to switch to lefty. He's like, why would you do that? There's no point in doing that. I was like, well, because you know, Nirvana's my favorite band. Kurt Cobain plays left-handed. And Jimi Hendrix is my favorite guitar player, and he plays left-handed. And I'm left-handed. He's like, yeah, but there's no point. You don't need to. So like... I would take guitar lesson. That became a challenge. And yeah, and I would do it right-handed. Yeah. And then when he would leave, I had uh, another guitar that I had strung left-handed. Yeah. And I would practice my same guitar lesson left-handed. Makes so, so much sense. So I would try bro. to do that. And so like it just became naturally in skateboarding. When I found out what Switch was, it just seemed like, oh, oh I got to learn that. Well, yeah, I have to try and be even. And that just became my... OCD, my thing, I guess. Yeah, I remember competing against you, bro, and I was like, man, he's going to do his whole run switch. There's no beating this guy if he does <laughs> this. Like, there's no beating this guy. And, like, bro, you would land full run switch and win the contest, and, like, no one was bummed. Everyone was almost in awe. Like, how did he do that? You know, I'd watch your video parts, and I would get confused as to what stance you were. And I think that's the, like the dopest confusion anyone can have as like a skateboarding fan. It's like, man, actually, what stance is this guy? Because you go out, you go try to throw a ball right-handed, whatever hand you are dominant with, and then you try to throw it the same speed, same accuracy with your not dominant hand. It's like it doesn't work. But your skateboarding does that, dude. And I believe that a lot of kids and adults that watch you skate and see how fluid you are, switch and regular. Um, are amazed which Thanks, i've always dude. been bro and it's like appreciate it it's super dope um Thanks. yeah it's just it just was the thing i don't know yeah i just got interested in it and thought it i just thought it was the coolest thing just to be even yeah i, don't know. <laughs> I think it's crazy too to me like you talk about being vocal about God and Jesus mm-hmm. and your faith and kind of understanding that like you've been kind of this light for skaters and people that, you know, I'm not yeah. a professional skater. I can barely even kick flip or ollie if that or run into a wall. But like we look to you guys and your parts and your videos for inspiration because it's so artistic, right? You mm-hmm. guys are like artists on boards and like the streets kind of your canvas and you're just like kind of flowing with it. And it's things that a normal person can't do mm-hmm. athletically and creatively because you guys are like landing tricks no one could ever even think about. But even in terms of being like role models, like even Shex, I know so many kids now that look to him as like a light of what to do and how to be. But even pro skaters like Robert Neal, you know, I've known him for a couple of years. He's on the Jackson skate team. And the first thing he told me was P-Rod changed my life. Saw me skating in L.A. (laughs) You know, I was in the hood, like in, in like some random skate park. And I did this trick and he saw me and he hit me up and changed my whole life. It's like you guys also had this power of like, changing people's lives just through skateboarding, which I think is one of the craziest things, you know? You know, it's a blessing. And I'm sure Ryan feels the same way as like, you know, at being at this point of our careers and having our own brands and being able to help a a kid whose dream, it was the same dream we had, help them get to a point of their dream coming true and being a part of that is so gratifying. It feels amazing and that's something i never thought about when when we were young all i thought it was what i wanted to do like the goals i was after and where yeah. i wanted to get in my career i never even thought about like what it would be like to be on the other side of that and help usher in and be a part of helping to put new people in position and help contribute to skateboarding in a different way by contributing to like the next generation of, of who's going to take the mm-hmm. torch mm-hmm. To the next generation you know like to me i found that to be very uh very gratifying. You know? yeah. yeah, I would agree. I would agree. It's, it's funny you say because yeah, you don't think, you're not thinking about anybody else except no. for yourself yeah. when you're in it, especially like 
when we were in it, in it, yeah, and like just, in the mode, it's yeah. like, man, what what else can I do at that point? Which is also not a bad thing because no, you at know at that point you have to be that way. Mm-hmm. You have and to the longevity of like skateboarding at the level that we want to be skating at is not really feasible for the amount of time that I thought it was going to yeah, be. Yeah, you know, as, I, we, as much as I don't want to admit that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's 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 reality. It doesn't mean that we can't film, we can't do amazing projects and put amazing things out. People want to see us skate. Yeah, we just saw one of the biggest projects of all time this yeah, week. Yeah, that, that was let's very not, inspiring. That, it was great. I, thank no, you. it was one of the glad best. Except your flowers, dude. I'm His video premiere. Yes, me done. and P-Rod were looking at that thing. Even P-Rod's part in it was pretty good, but that was amazing. <laughs> the, the most, like important part about what what i just put out you know is the yeah the, the skate part is for skateboarding but the documentary thing itself was for outside the outside world for anyone really just to realize like kind of the power in perseverance power in like not giving up that's really what that doc was about was like not giving up you can have people hitting you from every angle telling you you're nothing telling you you're not going to do it you can get injured as many times as you know god will allow you but if you're serious about your recovery and you're serious yeah. about your craft yeah. whatever it may be you can come back yeah. you can come back and you can come back stronger cuz you learn so much if you stay you stay coachable in those moments where it's like you think it's all over you'll be fine and i've had my fair share of injuries way too many um, for sure but I've learned something each time. Yeah. But what I've always found was like, and obviously no one ever wanted you to get hurt. And I thought for sure you were going to be like one of the main, <laughs> like one of the only pro skateboarders <laughs> that's the gnarliest dude that never got a serious injury. Um, but you did, yeah. right? Yeah. Your knee. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Was that one fall or was that just like no, cumulative? One moment. One moment. How'd um, that happen? I, it was, I tried to half cap flip a nine stair. And I just airballed it. My, my, I popped too late. My tail didn't pop. And that particular set of stairs was one of those, like, land on a curb, but it's a short curb, and then you go into a little parking lot, and there was a parking block right at the end. And I was, so, what I was thinking was like, worst case scenario was like, I wheel bite, fall forward, and hit my rib on the, on the parking block. Yeah, that's worst case so, for sure. So I was like, in my mind, that's, the like thing I was, I was considering. So yeah. when I went to half cap flip, the, my theory is why I airballed it is because half my attention is on this parking block at yeah, the millisecond, landing, and the other part is on the trick. And so once I felt it go wrong, my board flipped, and it flipped like vertical like that, and it's like kind of in between my legs, and so my attention was like going this way on the parking block, trying to avoid like Uh credit carding on the way down Uh or whatever. And my right leg landed first with all my weight. My upper body momentum was going that way, but my knee was still bent when I landed. So I couldn't like bring it with me. It it was bent. And so it went this way. Yeah. My my upper body went that way. So my body just went like that. I felt it all just. And that's the first time I felt anything like that it was yeah. just like an instant like i made the weirdest strangest noise that like i've never made in my yeah. life <laughs> <laughs> like, just, like the weirdest sound and just like cold sweat my whole career Ugh. flashed before my eyes like like isn't it crazy my, it's, it's the most it's crazy more than the pain is just the like the like yeah. oh my god it's over yeah. it's over that that's the pain that's like the hardest to bear for sure um probably because like I probably had harder slams that in the moment physically hurt yeah. harder, worse, but like the knowing of like this, that wasn't good. I felt my bones separate yeah. and come back. It's a different feeling. Yeah. And so back to what you were saying a second ago, like learning something from the, from that process. That was my first time having any type of surgery or anything. How old were you? I, I was his age. I was 33 when, yeah. when it happened to me. Yeah. And um, for me, what um what i what i learned about is what real like i i I got a real lesson on on like mental toughness because before you know the talking about skating and conscious and being nervous and all that and learning how to get your mind right in that situation that that's a form of mental toughness too but like i was really lucky 
everything in my skate career, it always just kind of like went along nice and just worked out the way I hoped it. And just like never really had hit real hard times. Yeah. And I didn't know how unready I was for hard times. You know, I knew that like studying these athletes, all of them, you name everybody I was studying, they all, if you follow their autobiographies and their stuff, they all have moments yeah. where they go through hell. The they darkness. They go through rough time. Yeah. And like, I think that's why we all really think they are so great is because they even through that, they come out mm -hmm. the dark, uh, out the dark times, they come out, you know, yeah. triumphant. For sure. And so like, <clears throat> I really dealt with like, feeling sorry for myself. Of course, dude. Feeling like it's over, you know, and then I really learned like, mental toughness isn't just like trying to be macho and pretend like none of this shit affects you and you just say, yeah, I'm good, I'm fine, I'm gonna be like, it, you find it's str strength and vulnerability, strength and yeah. like not knowing what's going to happen, being afraid. Uh, strength about talking about, about it. About talking like, about, about feelings, it. feelings, mm -hmm. you know? And you find so like... so not skate, you know? No, man, it's, it's, it's really like, man, not. Man, it's so healthy. So <clears throat> I remember going through times where I like rehab would be going really nice and I'd be like, yeah, I got this. I'm going to be better than ever. And then I'd go through days where like, I feel horrible. Like my knee doesn't feel like anything's happening. There's no progress. My, my, my atrophy, my muscle atrophy is not, not coming back. Like, oh my, like, like, what am I going to do? I don't think I'm ever What are these gonna... dudes doing? Yeah. How are they skating? Yeah. What tricks watch, are they I learning? I couldn't even watch skating. Yeah. I couldn't watch content. I couldn't watch skating. Yeah. I, I yeah, had yeah. so much FOMO that I couldn't. We've never got to I talk about this. Yeah. This is, I've lived this 12 times in oh, my yeah. life where I'm like, it's over. Yeah. It's done. And it's, that's where I had to talk to myself. I knew you. I knew Danny. Yeah. I knew Colin. I know all these guys who've gone through this over and over again. And I had to like moments when I was putting them, I'm like, come on, dude. Like your friends have gone through this like a lot yeah. of times. Yeah. Don't 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 be a wuss, dude. Like, come on. You, and I ha I remember just having to like tell myself and then realizing like all your heroes, anybody you look up to, has gone through their version mm -hmm. of this. Whether it's a physical injury, whether it was a career devastation, whether it was anything. They've gone through this and yeah. they've come out of it. This is your time. If you want to be great like them, if you want to be considered a legend, then this is where you have to pull through. You have to come out better. Yeah. And that's what I, the narrative I had to keep telling myself, especially on those days where you feel like yeah, it just feels like, and they tell you the recovery time and it seems so long. You're looking down the barrel of, you know, a year at, yeah, best, at best. And you're like, <laughs> oh, dude, it just felt like an eternity. It's a blip in time. And now, yeah. And now I feel. Five years after the fact of surgery, three years of like fully back skating again, I look at it as like a blessing. I'm for really, sure. I'm grateful for it. I don't necessarily want to go through it again, of nah. course, if I could, if I could avoid it. Of course. But you know, the value, the the, the gratitude that I learned, the 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 lessons of like how I was realizing how I was taking things for granted, not thinking I was, but was taking things for granted, was kind of took my foot off the gas, like not really pushing myself, just kind of going through the motions. And like, it, it really, it, it, you really learn a lot from it. So for I sure. just wanted to touch on that too, because you, you were talking about it. But yeah, dude, that's huge. Yeah. That's huge. For me, when I got injured, of course I would do the, the physical therapy and all that, but I found an outlet in getting tattooed. Mm. So my outlet was like, I still wanted to feel pain. I don't know if that's weird, but like I wanted to feel something. I wanted adrenaline. And the way I could find adrenaline during that time off was like getting tattooed and like getting big tattoos and getting a lot of them. And like for some reason, the, the hot, the pain, the like the, the mental preparation to like sit for four hours to like get your body like done, like helped me pass the time now I'm like pretty filled up. So I like don't have time to get injuries anymore and I don't have space anymore. But what, what did you find? What did you find that you were like neglecting? Um, and what I mean by that is like, was it business? Was it maybe a little bit more time with the family? Was like skateboarding taking over your time and your mental to a point that you kind of neglected some other things. And 100%. then when you got hurt, you were able to like, Okay, well, skateboarding's off. I'm gonna go focus on my relationship with my daughter, my, you know, my business, primitive. Like, am I? What can I do for Nike? Like, what can yeah. I do behind the scenes? Like, what what did yeah. that look like for you? Well, luckily, um, for me, because yeah, that was another thing. Like, if I didn't have an outlet, 
when that when you're in that period where you're like you're mobile again but you can't skate again but you you know like the only thing you really have to do is like go to rehab and work out and there, and you have that much space, yeah. free space that that could be like detrimental for your your mindset you know for sure so luckily uh about 2 years before i had the accident uh, or the the injury um i was taking acting classes like a couple times a week i was like going to acting class and it was fun. I, I was, you know, studying the craft, like going to class and like having a scene partner doing scenes in front of these yeah, people. Yeah, bro, you've always been hilarious. <laughs> I want to touch on that. And uh, sure. and so like I would be doing these acting scenes. So like I had found a, like a passion in that. And I was kind of like before the injury, like liking it more. And like I was still skating, but I wasn't skating as like aggressively and intense. Right. I had felt like. You know, I feel good about my career. I feel happy about my legacy of skating. Maybe yeah. I should think about what I'm going to do next. Yeah. I was kind of in this crossroads. And um, so luckily, once the injury happened, I just started going to class like five days Was that days before a week. or after Selena? That was before. Okay. Yeah. Selena was actually the first little role I got. Um, once I was good enough to walk again and without yeah. crutches, and I called my agent and said, hey, I'm ready to go on auditions again. That was one of my first auditions I went on. No way. Yeah. When Did you I, get it first try? No, I, I tried out for a different role, and then they picked somebody else for that, but they're like, hey, we want to look at you for this role. And it was super small role, but like- Yeah, but it was cool. I, I wasn't. It. I wasn't like um, so experienced yet. I just wanted to get on a set and yeah, watch real rad. actors work. It's like when you're a kid, you know, you, yeah. you want to be a pro skater. Like you don't care if you get one clip in four one one or whatever. You yeah. just want to know that like you're 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 making some progress towards that yeah. goal, and you want to be around the pros and see how they are in person. And so it was that type of vibe. So yeah, long story short, I uh, I just started going to acting class a lot more, Sick. a lot more. And then once I got better though, like I missed skating so much, and I yeah. wanted to skate so much that I actually since when the pandemic happened and we couldn't go into class anymore, I just haven't gone back because I yeah. just been like I'm just gonna skate because. In well, the primitive. Theory, you can always go back to acting class. For sure. You know. For sure. You can, I mean, it's always going to be there. Yeah. You know. The primitive video. Epic. Thanks, dude. Yeah. Shout out to the guys. Shout out to Alan one. Hannon. Yeah. Shout out to everyone. I mean, speaking, that, speaking of primitive, what goes into building a brand? I don't think people, I mean, I've seen Ryan build his brand recently yeah. with his name and like a lot of people were watching what he's doing with your skate park with Sandlot Times and the videos and the boards and the clothing and kind of the content, like he has such a streamlined vision. So like understands business really well, but for primitive, same thing. I think we look at that and we're like, yo, that's, that's a real brand, right? It's, that's not like a guy making merch. You know what I mean? Like yeah, you really yeah, brought yeah, yeah. something into the culture that's like hitters. there and it's all heavy hitters. Yeah. Like what goes into building a brand <clears throat> as a skater? Well, for me, it was just really important to like have a, have a skate team that like, you know, I, that I felt the skate community would, would respect. Like be like, those dudes don't play. They they, they know how to skate. Yeah. Yep, that's you did it. <laughs> <laughs> that that was always my number one goal with doing primitive skateboards, you know? As far as building a brand and stuff, I actually had no idea what I was doing. Like because you know, primitive started as a as a store, as you know, as a sneaker store and slowly built into a brand. My partners who I started with had a vision of like building and expanding it and me at that time i was 23 when the store opened so i was just well bro the clothes were epic i, yeah. I only wore primitive <laughs> yeah. oh, man i mean the skate that. store by my house sold primitive clothing mm -hmm. yeah. but yeah. primitive was a store at the time it's so trippy yeah. like you really did yeah. something no one could do well i can't take credit for that like a man. store was like, selling my, another store's my partners brand. yeah my partners uh they they really started making really cool clothes like my, my partner uh andy and jubal at that time who we I started with they they really have that design mind yeah. and they started in retail because at that age i was 23 i was still all i wanted to do was skate be a pro skater like, i just want to focus on my career and but i knew that like i want to be able to have something ready for when it was time to mm -hmm. you know uh time to you know step down but so I really don't have a great answer to that. I just knew that my contribution to the brand, the best thing I could do for Primitive is try to be the best pro skater I can be, be the most, uh, you know, as well-known as I could be, be respected as yeah, I could yeah, be, absolutely. marketable as I Did could it. be. And I, I know that I think you have to have everybody in a position that plays their own role and trust that they're going to do their role good, like on a good basketball team. You, you don't want the, uh, you know... The, 
whatever the center to try to be doing what the point guard's doing. Right. Like yeah, you got to trust sense. your point yeah. guard. You know, like yeah. let him do Huge. it. Trust Huge. him. And, and if everybody plays their position as best as they can possibly do, I think that's the recipe for success. And even still, that would be that's very hard sometimes. But um, so that that's my my thing is just have a, the right team, right partner, people who are just as passionate about what they do as you are about what you do. Because I know how I feel about skateboarding, how passionate I am about skateboarding, and yeah. how much effort and willingness I was willing to put into skateboarding. If they have that same fire for like design, and all they think all day long is design, creativity, what's new, what's in trend, what's on style. Mm-hmm. That's You want that kind of person in that position and in every position that you need, a marketing position, whatever. So I guess that's my advice. But it, I know that if I actually tried to go into primitive every day and like try to run it, It'd be a junk show. Out, yeah, it would. I, it would burn me out because that's not my passion, and it would be a junk show. I'd be yeah. trying to, you know, micromanage and, and just cause. I'd, I'd cause havoc in there. So like, mm-hmm. <laughs> trust your partners. I stay in the loop. I stay in meetings with my partners all the time. Just what's the latest? What's going on? Where are we at? And all that. But you know, yeah, got to build a good team, man. That's dope, dude. That's super dope. And it's actually really insightful. You say you don't know, but it's like <laughs> you, you just explained it very well. You stay, stay yeah. where you are comfortable and have people that are comfortable where they're at. Yeah. And then also be able to listen to you when you have an idea. Like with Bear and what we're doing over here, what Bear's really doing over here and the team is like, you know, asking me like, what do you want to do? Mm-hmm. Well, I kind of want to do like maybe some jeans. Like, let's do this. And like mm-hmm. having the opportunity to have an idea and then place it in hands that are capable right. is a beautiful thing for any business yeah you know yeah, yeah, for yeah. any business yeah um speaking of that like when kids right now you know i skate with a lot of kids i know you skate with a lot of kids um the consensus seems to be especially with social media actually let me go first <laughs> with this like we came up in an era yeah. that had no social media yeah and so like you're top professional skateboarder in the world top five most well-known skateboarders in the world and you did that without social media now we have kids coming up that worry about content and worry about filming every single session that they're doing and i'm not i don't feel any certain way about it i think at some point it kind of takes away from the actual beauty of learning how to skate and learning what your style is. Um, I think there's a lot of comparison going on. Um, how do you feel? How do you feel about that, dude? How do you feel about the social media and the effect that it is having on skateboarding? And maybe the effect that it's having on sessions where yeah. it's not so much like load up the car and just yeah. go skate yeah. and go have fun yeah. and laugh and like yeah. everything's got to be a skit, everything's got to be filmed. Yeah. You know, video parts are becoming a little bit. <laughs> Not less important, but like there's gnarly tricks being posted every single day yeah. from kids that I have no idea who they are. Right. And I forget the tricks that they do, but if they would have put a full part together, like it would be in- insane. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. Like social media, I think, is a little gnarly right now in skateboarding. I think there's pros and cons to it all. Um, obviously, like the era we grew up in, I think. That's where we fell in love with it. So we're going to always feel like that's the golden era and special to us. Ooh, I know kids who maybe are 12, 13, 14 for them right now. These will be the times that are golden for them. Yeah. So when they're 10 years from now, the, whatever the kids are doing then, they're going to be like, you know, my day back in my, we're just right, those right, dudes, right. the back in my oh, day yeah. guys, you know? Shoot. Um, yeah, so are. I look at it from <laughs> that perspective, like, okay, just, you know, know that time passed. Um, it's a good way to look at I it. I think though we were lucky we came up in an era what i like about what we came up in is like we back then we had brands that when they when they signed us or sponsored us they put ads out for they marketed us they helped push us to make us feel bigger than life right what is hard for me to understand now maybe because we got so spoiled by that is like a lot of times brands when they sign you now they want you to not only be the the, the, the skater, the athlete. And the promoter. But they want you to be the marketer too. Yeah. Like, all right, so come up with this idea for a video, come up with it. And I'm like, well, that's <laughs> not worthy. I'm not good at that. Like, that's not yeah. my expertise. Yeah. 
So for me, I find it hard, like, okay, you know, trying to come up with some ideas that would, wouldn't feel corny or would feel interesting, yeah. would feel like it would get good, you know, uh, uh, engagement, right. you know, so that's, that's hard for me personally. Same. But I think... That's why I have a bear. Yeah, that's why it's I have a It's hard for everybody. Mic. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so, like, I think... Um, but the kids who don't know that era never were in that were born in this era. That's how they. That's the way their mind works. Yeah. So I think people who understand that and know how to make fresh content can thrive in this too. Like oh, for sure. you're seeing it make people superstars for doing the for silliest sure. things, yeah. not even just skating. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So there's pros and cons to it. Obviously, you know it's a medium I use. I definitely find myself. Oh, I'm all over it. Be, yeah, I no, just, I know yeah, you yeah, are too. I'm yeah, all yeah. over it. Yeah. I, I find myself being a little more. Uh, worried about how many views and likes yeah. that I get than I should be. Yeah. Um, for sure. It's hard not to, I think it, it could be toxic, but I think it could be beneficial. It's like, what's that saying? They say the, the, the same fire that could cook your food can cook the man as well. It depends how you use it. You yeah, know yeah. I mean? you, you could either, you could use it to, to like put positive stuff in your mind, elevate your career, uh, you know, or you can, it and it's toxic and you can't stop watching crazy shit and like whatever you're putting negativity into the world it's it's hard man it, it depends how you use it but yeah it's a tool it's there it ain't going nowhere it's only oh, gonna it's, keep it it's only getting crazy evolving, it's, di so. it's difficult for business and content creators and athletes right because like when i was building brands at a young age or when i knew Shex and we were 16 17 you know you look towards magazines mainstream media radio billboards like it was very you know very niche people that were doing flyers. Like you were, you were like, you know, kind of guerrilla marketing if you made flyers and flyers and posters became the norm. And then those went and then social media became the norm. But you have these superstar eras like you guys, where you guys are global icons, both of you that are at the level that it's almost impossible even for a modern day skater to get to I do feel because you did it at a time without social. So you're still considered this like elite superstar because sure. now everybody thinks sure. there's a, they're a superstar if they got a million followers sure. which is cool you have following you have engagement yeah. i get it but you're you're not like that global icon where you're like kind of like this untapped person sure and that's something that you guys will always have though but it yeah. is hard i think that now you know when you do get money from brand they're expecting you to make content market the brand market yourself look organic show up to shoots do things you know in the old days you get your million dollar check and you would just have to wear shades when you show up to x games so it's different, yeah. you know, or a hat, you know, and it's just yeah. not that way anymore. It's not that way. Yeah. Anymore. Yeah. It's, it's way different. And I feel for any kid trying to make it right. Any kid who actually breaks through and becomes a superstar or, or the, you know, the top dog in, in, well, I'll just speak for skating for now has to be super special. Yeah. You either have to be un cause everybody's good. Everybody's good. Yeah, everybody's really amazing. Gnarly. Like, I feel like. Like when I watch skateboarding these days, I feel like I don't even know how to skate. I'm like, how, like this is crazy. Like I don't even like. That's so crazy. It makes me scratch my head every day. I'm like, way, I'm like, I'm like, I don't know. Like, oh, like I'll have plenty of days where I'll be like, oh, I don't know if I have anything to really contribute anymore. Like I don't know really what my purpose is in this anymore. Cause like, little Timmy from Wisconsin will just do something that like no one's ever seen. Right. And it'll go through, boom, and then it's gone tomorrow. And then the next one comes, it's gone tomorrow. Video part drops. Wow, that was gnarly. The guy just killed himself for however long it took him to film this video part. And then tomorrow, next, next, yeah. next. I feel like it just feels... It's overconsumption. It's like yeah, being oversaturated, overstimulated, and it loses that wow factor. I'm just curious how like a kid who doesn't know anything before that, how their brain is wired compared to our brains who, who knew, mm -hmm. who, who we grew up trained a certain way. Big video would drop maybe once a year, maybe... Yeah every couple year, whatever, and you, you lived off that video until the next big one came. And uh, like, I, I'm just curious to know like how their brains are wired for absorbing this much content. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's hard though, because I think, yeah, putting on out so much footage, I actually lost faith in, in, in skate videos. I, I would talk about this a few years ago. Like I was like, I actually was like, I don't think I'm ever gonna put a video part out again. I think I'm just gonna, Go on Instagram, post some stuff, whether it's just streets, in the park, and just, yeah. and just every every few days. Because I was like, we know how hard it is to put video parts out. You just put one out. Like, bro, you know how much your body goes to trying to film a video part? And at least in a certain era, you would it would 
people would live off that video part for a year, two years, right. or whatever, until you put out your next one. Right. But now I'm like, as a pro skater, especially you get older and you feel your body, you're like, bro, I'm not about to go through a whole year of trying to kill myself, put a video part together for it to come out, maybe get a week of steam, of juice, of, of people like talking about right. it, and then it's gone, forgotten. I was like, that the juice is not worth the squeeze right no. there. I'm like, so I thought there was like the skate, the video part was going to fade out, but I don't know. I feel like it's kind of making a little bit, of, uh, making a comeback now. Like you just dropped yours. I feel like the primitive video when we dropped it and like people are trying to do full length videos now. I feel like there's people out there trying to keep that spirit alive with yeah. that. So I don't know. I feel maybe it'll, re it'll level out at some point, but the spirits, the spirits alive. I think for me doing this video, it wasn't, um, as much as it is for skateboarding, because I am a skateboarder, um, I felt very similar to how you felt, and I had to get my brain to a place where I just realized that this is my craft, this is what I love, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna do it for myself. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna skate the spots I wanna skate, yeah. and do the tricks I wanna do, and uh, it made it a lot more enjoyable. And I'm not to, really, yeah. I wasn't really worried about the, the end result of like likes and follows and whatever. I just wanted it to be done for me. I just wanted to contribute to skateboarding, whether it got seen or not seen. At least I knew I did it, and I did another thing for skateboarding, which I love and which supports me. Yeah. Um, and that's like the healthiest way you can go about it in yeah. this day and age, you know? It's the only reason it got done. It's because I, I wasn't for anyone else except for, like, selfishly for myself. I wanted to finish a part. But th that's like healthy selfish, yeah. you know? Yeah, it was, it was healthy for sure. Um, but my life's just in a completely different place. You've been a dad for how, how old's your daughter now? 14. 14, bro. 14 years, yeah. So crazy. She's starting remember, high school in two weeks. I remember, that's so gnarly, bro. <laughs> I, I remember seeing her at fellow girl dad. Yeah. Um, I remember seeing her at the contest, man, and just like. Oh, baby, man. I was always, I was always so stoked to see that. And I. And at that time where I was at mentally, I, I never thought I'd be a dad. I never thought I'd be able to settle I mean, down. You were still a teenager yourself. You for know? sure. For sure. There's some things I could see in the future, but that's something I couldn't see, you know? And like yeah. the fact that now I'm, I am a dad and a girl dad. And um, bro, it's the coolest. It's the coolest thing ever. And, you know, someone asked me and I wanted to ask you, which clearly you did not, you know, was like, are you going to chill out skating or like you can just. I just said I be, I've become a little bit more calculated, but I'm not chilling out on what I want to do or how I want to skate. Mm -hmm. um, but you've always been super calculated. I just want like, how was it becoming a dad? At because that was at like the height, dude. 14 years that ago, was 23 yeah. when she was born, just about to be 24. Yeah, yeah, you were firing on all cylinders. Did that add motivation? Uh, you know, I. So hard to remember. I don't no, I do, I do. I'm not, I, I don't I'm not gonna say I, I'll say no, it didn't add motivate. I, at that age, at that time, I didn't need any more motivate. Like I was as motivated yeah, yeah. as motivated could be. Yeah, I know. Whether I had one wrong. kid or ten kids, I wanted to skate my ass off. Yeah. Yeah. Uh it just taught me that like, up until that point, I'm only living for myself and what yeah. I want and what I need. Yeah. And you know, don't get me wrong, especially being a young dad to I'm still actually having to learn how selfless you have to be to be a parent, yeah. you know, to, to, to be there for your kid. <clears throat> you know, I knew that I, I wanted to be in my kid's life and, you know, I, I didn't, my, I know my dad, I, I saw my dad growing up, but I, he, he wasn't a day-to-day -day figure in my life, you know, so I at least wanted my daughter to know that I'm, I'm there for her on a daily basis. Yeah. Um, so that, that was one thing I knew I wanted as a parent. But as far as motivation, uh, I, I was just, I just wanted to skate all day, every day at that time, you know? So, yeah. Uh, yeah three, that would have been, I would have been 18. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's when you were, that was, we a, were, we that were, was a crazy year. We were going on. That was a crazy time. Yeah, that was, we were, yeah. We were on one. Yeah, we were. We were on one. We were definitely firing on all cylinders. That's right, dude. Yeah, I've looked up to you um, in many aspects throughout your whole career, a skateboarder as a person. Um, and vice versa, my man. I appreciate you, bro. And I think like an interesting question that's been asked is like, when people think about Paul Rodriguez, 
what do you want them what what's what do you want them to feel what do you want them to know you know i don't know that's a good question cuz like we were talking about before you know like i don't i think it was before we even started filming uh you know at that age younger you know you want a certain kind of attention like yeah. if you'd ask me this 10 15 years ago i say i just want to be looked at as like one of the greatest ever yeah legend you well know, you are there I, I appreciate that like at that time like when you're younger you just like you look up to people you look at heroes and i just want to be up there with them like that like that like it was more, more of an ego based right. thing yeah you know and now it feels great and nice when people, you know, say nice things to me and like, hey, man, like you've done a lot or people like stoked to see me. It feels nice, but I try to be careful to not let it feel too good yeah. and get carried away with it. You know, I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know. That's a good question. Uh, I, just, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I yeah. wanted to come up yeah. with something and say something like really cool that's why everybody loves you you're so yeah. humble yeah, and genuine you don't sell you're just like you that's, know, why, that's why people so love I you so I can answer for him yeah. he cares <laughs> please about, do this guy's so humble I, I would say that P-Rod cares about people he cares about people's feelings he cares about bringing up the next generation of skateboarding he loves God um, and he's selfless that's, that's how I would well I appreciate that it's not all true. When you're saying that, I'm nitpicking everything. I was like, no, nah, that's not. <laughs> I'm nah, nitpicking everything but, apart. But uh, you are your own worst critic, you know. Of course. But uh, I appreciate it. It means a lot, man. I mean, it really does. And it, I feel grateful. I guess right now, I just, I'm just feeling grateful. Feeling gratitude. I thank God every morning, every night. Like, just, I can't believe still here, first of all. I can't believe Amen. it went by so fast. Yeah. And I can't believe... You know that it happened better than I actually dreamt about when I originally first had the yeah. dream of becoming a pro skater. I can't believe it. Like I'm like, this is yeah. absolutely insane. Like it just worked. Sometimes <laughs> I feel guilty about it. <laughs> yeah, that's fair, dude. I mean, I mean, you guys have been at the height of the game for 20 plus years. I mean, just think about that. Like in basketball, LeBron, Michael, maybe. Like, yeah. think about that. Name one in soccer or baseball, maybe. Like, yeah. it's very hard to stay this relevant, stay at the height of the game. I'm. You literally just put out probably the best part of the year. I mean, you're still at the height of the game. You guys were both at SLS in Chicago. I mean, it's crazy. Like, you're still there supporting the skaters, but also supporting the movement of what skating is, which is this culture. Like, you're the the last of the Mohicans keeping the culture together because you are what these young kids who are currently winning looked up to growing up. You ask any skater right now that's winning. They looked up to you guys, you know what I mean? And it's like, they say it, you know, proudly, you know? And I think that's the craziest thing that people don't realize about skating. And that's why skating is always at the center of culture, of fashion, of style, of arts, why artists and celebrities like them in music videos and fashion designers use skating and clothing yeah. is because skating is that limitless, timeless art form that everybody loves. And you guys have been at the hype forever. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's just a, cool. It's cool. Skating, it's the coolest thing. Skating's just cool. It Jumping remain, off buildings. and It remains cool. <laughs> yeah, it's just insane, dude. Yeah. What's next for P-Rod? That's a good question. I'm actually at a point in my life where uh, it's a little bit of a uncertainty. I don't, I don't know. All right. I don't know. Uh, I mean... Still skating, of course. Of course. Uh, still want to do that, and that's fun. But like, I don't know what I want to do. I don't know. Do I want to keep? Do I want to go to compete anymore? I don't know. Like, I def I film. I'll go out and I'll film. Yeah. But I'm like, am I aiming for a, a video part? I don't know. Like, or do I just want to like go to the skate park and like just skate, play games of skate with my friends? I don't know. Like, it's a fun place to be. <laughs> yeah, it's it's uh, it's. It's, um, I'm very fortunate as you are as, as well, Ryan, like I'm very fortunate to have the luxury of being confused and being unsure of what to do with my life and not have the pressure of like, I have to figure it out. Right. And you also have options. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like I'm very, I'm yeah. just very grateful. The fact yeah. that I'm able to be uncertain about what I want mm -hmm. or where I want to go, what yeah, I want to do. Obviously, you have zero to or, prove in skateboarding. Yeah, I don't feel like I have anything to prove except to myself. Yeah. That will always be there. You always want to prove something to yourself. For sure. 
um, I don't want any anyone's approval. I don't, you know, I don't know. I just, I'm just up in the air right now. I just, you know, I'm just leaving leaving space for for it to be revealed. Of what you know, what's next? You know. All right. I love that answer. <laughs> Thank you. I love that answer. I'm just trying to be a dad. I had these three random questions that I wrote down that my wife <laughs> came up with. I love it. Uh, so I'm going to ask them. I think I want to yeah, ask them away. like everybody. Fire away. I love please, it. Please, please. Um, all right. Dream vacation and who's on it? Alive or dead? Damn. That's a... I, dude, that's you know good. what's that's funny is... Uh, you, no, can, you can go up and go, I need to think. <laughs> no, that's all you. <laughs> Questions for you. You know what's funny is like, just bringing it to another point, like, all the traveling we've done for uh-huh. skating, all the traveling we've done yeah, over the years. Yeah, you burnt out. You burnt out of it. And I actually have never thought about it. I've never had a... I don't... At no disrespect to any of my old relationships, but I never, ever went on a vacation unless, like, I felt pressured to by a girlfriend or something. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know, like, I never had an interest in going on a vacation. Yeah. So, But now at this stage of life, I actually am open to, like, Man, I spent my whole life doing that. Like, what else does life have to offer? I don't yeah. know. I'm kind of in a spontaneous open. But long story short, I don't know. I've never I actually haven't thought about a vacation yet. I guess I don't know. I'd want I'd want to go. Maybe you know, like I've been to Europe plenty, but like yeah. maybe I actually want to like go to Europe and see the stuff that I didn't get to see. You know, like I want to see like the Colosseum. I want to see like just like go to the Louvre and walk through the whole museum or stuff like that, I guess, maybe. Like, I don't know who would be on it. I want to take my daughter around the world. She's old enough now. I can travel with her, and, like, she, she's independent and all that. Um, you know, wouldn't mind taking a few days out with my my lady friend and, you know, going somewhere nice, tropical maybe. I don't, yeah, I don't know. Go. but I like that. But, right. yeah, that's a, it's... Thought provoker. Yeah, I gotta think about that now. Thought provoker. <laughs> All right. Um, what's a perfect day look like for P Rod? Uh, one where my eyes open. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> one Amen. Everyone I love, their eyes open as well. That's Amen. a perfect day. <laughs> Great. And then the last one. This one was my question. Private plane or a private island? Plane. Yeah. Oh, that's good. I don't need a private island, I, but but man, airport travel after. Remember, I told you about my <laughs> my trip to New York and I couldn't get back. Yeah. And private plane would have been Ooh, bro. boss. I've been traveling with a four and a half month old. I want a plane, yeah, so bad. Yeah, <laughs> yes, yeah, hundred percent. So airport bad. Airport travel is yeah. probably the worst thing. Oh of all time. Yeah. I don't need a private island. I can go vacation on an island. Yeah, yeah, you'll be you know, fine. Go to a hotel. I just never know. Yeah. Sometimes you want some like exclusivity and you want to be away or just the plane can get you anywhere. Yeah, the plane, that'll get you away real good. Right, you got to help us work on getting some Yeah, some we need to get, we need to get a, a Jackson skate team plane oh, and man. then you guys could just take it around anywhere you want. Like Maybe we that. could get a deal with Jet Suite X. Let's we'll just do let that. us book it around. Yeah, oh my that. gosh. Piro, I, I kind of want to know who your top three favorite skaters of all time are. Eric Koss and Tom Penny, Andrew Reynolds. Yep. Oh, like that. Solid. That's it. Yeah, that's that's my, a great lineup. That's my trifecta right there. That is. Many, many other skaters that are very close held right there, but Eric Koss and Tom Penny, Andrew Reynolds. Wow. Yeah. And uh, what's your favorite event you ever skated in? Ooh. I don't know. We've had some doozies. We have. had some good ones. We have. Uh, I guess looking back on it now, I mean, at the time, I enjoyed it a whole lot, too, but I just really missed those days when we were just, it would either be like you, me, yeah. or Chris, like, yeah. switching off at the podium, switching yeah. around, like, that would be like, those, those at, what, at any of those events, those were always fun. Um, there was like a 2008, I think it was 2008, X Games. Yep. You won that one. No. I got silver. Yeah, that was 08. And then did we flip-flop? I won 09. You okay. won 08. So we flip flop. So I'm not talking about the one I won. Cole the one won. You won. 06, 07. Yeah. So the one you won, we were like heavy plan B. That was like. I was like Home Depot Center. It, whatever, yeah, yeah, it was just dope. It was just dope. And I'll never forget that. And there's like my favorite photo that I post almost every year for your birthday. <laughs> I was hugging on the thing. Because it's, it's more than like. And we have tons of photos together. There's something about that photo and like the, the pure joy. For me, like 
watching what you did competing with you and like holding my own but like knowing that you won like I knew you won but I just wanted to be on the podium with you you know like at that point it was just like P-Rod's going like I gotta get I gotta get on that podium and like to go one and two the way we did I think I'm wearing a red shirt you're wearing a white and we're just like we're just genuinely stoked yeah. for each other yeah. like yeah that camaraderie in skateboarding like that's what made me love skateboarding that's what made me love competing yeah. um and at, at some point that you know kind of just the love for competing just went away maybe i the ego got out of it or, or something happened where the fire just no wasn't. same i feel that way right now uh just like the fire i i like the memory of that yeah. but like the fire like uh, yeah it, it, you have to have a fire you have to really like want to go out and try to try yeah. to win and yeah. in skateboarding it was kind of taboo to be like i want to win yeah guys would be like ah, you know just see what happens no, just, just do win. whatever yeah, i wanted to win yeah, wanted to you win. know what i mean like i wanted to win especially i knew he was gonna be there i knew chris cole was gonna be there i knew yeah. chaz yeah. was gonna be there i knew whoever the guys were who were killing it i was like they're all gonna be there and it felt so good on a day when you could finally get a win with all those guys all in attendance all skating great and you're like that day man dude i was able to battle and go toe-to-toe -to -toe with these guys and like pull out a win and we all got yeah. our fair share of those you know what i mean we like did. and so like it just was Bro, cool i will never forget and i say it to people all the time because you said it to me one time at one contest and it stuck with me and i know you were like joking but i also knew you and i was like oh this is actually a, a an insight into your mental uh -huh. i think i said good luck or like have fun today and you like looked at me and you're kind of serious and you're like today we're friends off <laughs> and i never i like I, it took me a second to like to process it and i'm like wait friends off like okay normally we're on okay we're friends <laughs> off today this guy's serious and it like kind of scared me dude and so i've said that to a bunch of people over the years. i don't remember That's what funny. contest you said that to me but like you definitely said it and but you like, know i had to learn that from you because you you have a killer instinct in you naturally I, I naturally am like a, a not a competitive person outside of this. Yeah. Some of my friends sure. will say different if we're playing like uh, like like eight up at the basketball court. But other than that, like I'm not competitive by nature. And I had to learn how to be competitive with skating. Yeah. Um, I had to learn how like like all that during that era I was telling you studying all these guys their mental tough. I had to learn and I saw what like I would see what they were talking about and I would see it in you, you know. You have it. Nigel has it. It's, just, it's a certain killer instinct to where in the moment when you have to do it, somehow you guys always do it. You yeah. always pull it. And I'm like, how, what is that? I was like, I could do it 10 out of 10 in practice. Yeah. And if, but if I need to right here, it's a, yeah, it's a, it's 50, 50, I I need, know. you know, in that moment. So like I had to learn. So like probably I'm in that moment when I said that, I was probably like, nah, man, I'm, I'm going to be a killer yeah, today. Playing, I got a killer instinct. It's probably going to work. <laughs> it works for sure. Yeah, that's funny. And then I saw, I'm sure we all watched it, the the USA basketball team uh, yeah. documentary. And then Kobe's like, I'm running through Powell's chest. Mm -hmm. Like, like that's that's like what a real killer does, you know? So I was that was me trying to, you know, be, be a baby killer. <laughs> not it worked not, that I sounded remember. bad like being yeah, a, ju you know what you mean. a junior <laughs> killer <laughs> we'll edit that out. We'll edit that out. um yeah ah uh, dude oh, that was it's uh it's just a pleasure to be your to be your friend and like to be in the same world that you're in and be able Thanks, to have man. these conversations you know and um you know i'll, I'll just I'm just, uh, I'm stoked, man. I'm stoked and I feel blessed and, and thankful that I got to spend so many years with you and especially like those plan B years were mm -hmm. like s some of the best for me ever. I don't think I've ever been on a squad at that time that was, that even touches that and the trips that we went on and the special, memories special that special we made, dude. like that, there's era. nothing that compares to that for me. And so for you to be a part of that um, and a part of those memories and, and, and really a part of the best times in skateboarding for me, um, vice versa man yeah, like super like, thankful uh, me too very grateful grateful to know you grateful to see where you are grateful to yeah. see you here doing your thing uh just uh, you know it's you got to be grateful in life man i don't know i think short. it's like it's it's the most important thing i it's think way too short man just kind of pay it forward and give it back and try to do what we can through experience for this next generation it's not about telling someone what to do it's about telling them 
what happened to me and allowing them to make their own decisions. We've been yeah. through it. Yeah. You know, we've been yeah. through a lot of um, experiences that all of these kids are going to go through coming up if you want skateboarding to be your life. Yeah. And um, I think we owe it to, to them to at least share our experience um, so they can make their own decision on whether or not they want to follow that path or not do, you know, not do that. Maybe get some more longevity out of it. Uh, yeah. We're but, very lucky for the longevity we've had. I mean, obviously, yeah. we can all count a number of people off the top of our heads who were here and gone. Yeah, and literally gone, not here with us anymore. And probably yeah, lost their souls. Yeah, you know? yeah, 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 in that way as well, yeah. Like, we, we got lucky in, in, a, in, for the sake of convenience, we'll call it a sport, in a sport where, where you're not guaranteed uh, many years and you weren't, by the time... By late 20s, you were considered old. Like when mm -hmm. I started coming in the game, like yeah. you were 27, 28, you were on your way out. Yeah. You know, so. Well, it's cool to be here 10 years post that. You know? Still doing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that was, uh, that was our first episode. Paul Rodriguez himself. This is Flip the Script, Jackson House. And uh, thank you all for watching and tuning in. Thank you, uh, very guys. insightful stuff. Thank you for being here, P. Rod. My Thank pleasure. You, Bear. Thank you, Bear. Facilitating this room and this, mm. uh, this awesome opportunity. Love you guys. I don't know who's coming up next. We'll see. Keep you posted. <laughs> <laughs>